to Drain Lake Powell have been around for decades now, but they've been considered by most to be a far-fetched idea. Lake Powell, a sprawling reservoir carved between the iconic Red Rock Canyons of the Colorado Plateau, has long symbolized both water security and environmental strain in the American West. But now, it's raising alarm for a different reason, one hidden beneath its surface. This week, satellites detected a rapid and unexpected movement of Earth below the lake bed, deformation consistent with ground uplift and lateral displacement. This isn't sediment settling or seasonal swelling. It's something more sudden, more structural. In Glen Canyon, the dangling rope marina is unsustainable. That's the reason the National Park Service is giving for their decision to shut down the marina today. The Park Service says climate change and aridification lowered water levels to a point for a body of water already at the center of climate debate. These new satellite findings may signal a deeper geologic risk, one linked not to evaporation, but to the forces moving underground. In this video, we'll break down what satellites have seen, what geologists suspect is happening beneath Lake Powell, and whether this is the next seismic threat hiding in plain sight. The signal, satellite sees what eyes cannot. The detection began with INSAR, Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, gathered from Sentinel-1 and ISI satellite arrays. These instruments measure minute ground movements with millimeter precision. The technology works by bouncing radar signals off the Earth's surface during multiple satellite passes and detecting phase shifts between the signals. These shifts reveal changes in surface elevation that are often too small to be detected by the human eye or even traditional ground surveys. In just four days, satellites recorded vertical uplift of nearly 12 millimeters near the southern basin of Lake Powell. That's fast especially in geological terms. Accompanying the uplift were horizontal displacements stretching outward in a circular pattern. In this Impact Earth report tonight, meteorologist Jorge Torres and photojournalist Justin Fuller traveled to the Arizona-Utah border to see the water levels for themselves and find out what may happen if they drop any more. Hallmarks of subsurface pressure buildup that could signal fault movement or magmatic intrusion. The circular symmetry of the displacement vector when analyzed using INSAR phase unwrapping algorithms resembled classic patterns observed in other deformation zones such as Long Valley Caldera and Yellowstone. To validate the satellite data, geophysicists checked nearby GPS stations and ground tilt meters installed by the USGS. The instruments confirmed the shift ruling out atmospheric noise, sensor misalignment, or seasonal ground heave. This was real, and it was recent. The rate of movement, nearly three millimeters per day, places it among the faster rates of vertical displacement recorded in the Colorado Plateau in the past decade. More granular analysis showed that the deformation was not uniform. A small zone near the Cane Creek anticline showed concentrated uplift an asymmetric radial motion, suggesting the presence of a localized pressure point, possibly a fluid-filled fracture or hydrothermal vent at depth. Ground tilt meters revealed a distinct change in slope direction over a 36-hour period, consistent with dome-like swelling. Even more telling, a faint swarm of microquakes, too small to be felt, occurred in the same time frame registered by the University of Utah's Regional Seismic Network. These quakes had a shallow focus, with depths ranging from three to six kilometers and exhibited low-frequency waveforms. This frequency signature is often associated with fluid-induced events in which pressurized water or gas alters the mechanical properties of the surrounding rock. Some of these microquakes were located along previously mapped but inactive fault traces, raising the possibility that ancient structures are being reawakened. Adding to the evidence, strain meter readings from boreholes near the dam's southern flank indicated a temporary spike in crustal strain that coincided with the satellite-detected uplift event. These sensors recorded a subtle shift in crustal stress orientation, 
which may point to localized fault dilation or injection of pressurized fluids into tight rock interfaces. Similar patterns have been observed during swarm sequences in geothermal regions such as Salton Sea and Taupo. INSAR coherence maps also revealed a zone of surface decorrelation, an indicator of fine-scale cracking or slope destabilization along the lake's southeastern shoreline. This may be an early sign of surface rupture or sediment realignment due to subcrustal motion. Geologists are currently inspecting this area by drone and foot to determine whether fractures or stress-aligned vegetation patterns are emerging. All signs point to a dynamic geophysical event centered deep beneath the lake. To better understand the event's geometry, researchers have begun generating 3D models using elastic dislocation theory, integrating INSAR-derived surface vectors, seismic hypocenter distributions, and strain accumulation data. The goal is to estimate the depth, volume, and potential source mechanism of the uplift, whether it be tectonic stress release, magmatic intrusion, or hydrothermal fluid redistribution. These models, when combined with real-time ground-based data, are helping geologists refine risk assessments for Lake Powell's basin and the surrounding infrastructure. As new satellite passes continue to collect data, scientists will be watching closely to see if the uplift stabilizes or accelerates. What's causing the ground to move? Scientists are currently examining two primary hypotheses, poor pressure migration due to fluctuating water levels and shallow magmatic or hydrothermal activity linked to crustal weakness. Lake Powell's dramatic rise and fall due to drought and water release cycles exerts enormous stress on the lake bed. When water is rapidly withdrawn, it reduces the load pressing down on underlying rock. That unloading can allow faults or fracture zones to flex, slip, or even reactivate. Recent numerical simulations using elastic rebound theory have shown that unloading can cause a temporary stress increase in adjacent fault blocks, making them more prone to slip even in the absence of large tectonic forces. One area of growing interest is the relationship between unloading and poor fluid migration. As water levels drop, not only does the physical pressure on rock reduce, but changes in the hydraulic gradient can cause groundwater to move deeper into subsurface fractures. This movement can increase pore pressure along fault planes, effectively lubricating them. Elevated pore pressure reduces the effective normal stress on a fault, allowing it to move more easily, a phenomenon known as fault weakening. Recent borehole pressure data near Waweep Creek indicate cyclic fluctuations that align closely with lake level drawdowns, further supporting this link. In some cases, transient pressure spikes have been detected at depths exceeding 300 meters, suggesting that deep fractures may be hydraulically connected to the surface hydrology of the reservoir. Another theory is that deeply buried fluid systems, superheated water, or even magma pockets are responding to the shifting pressure regime. The Colorado Plateau, though considered tectonically stable over large timescales, is dissected by a complex web of hidden faults, joints, and rift zones. Some lie beneath the lake's southern basin, precisely where the deformation was recorded. These zones may be weak points where pressurized fluids from deeper crustal levels rise upward. Supporting this idea, Magnetotelluric data collected from prior surveys show high conductivity anomalies under the area, suggesting zones of saturated or partially molten rock. Electrical conductivity in the crust often correlates with the presence of saline fluids or partial melt, both of which can facilitate rock deformation. These anomalies are concentrated near the Big Bend region of the lake close to the Cane Springs fault system. Geochemical analysis of spring water around Lake Powell has also revealed increased concentrations of dissolved gases like CO2 and helium isotopes, possible indicators of magmatic or deep crustal origins. Helium-3, 
to helium-4 ratios, in particular, are being monitored as they can signal whether the gas originated in the mantle or crust. Elevated ratios detected in the area are raising new questions about the possibility of hidden volcanic or geothermal systems beneath the lake bed. Seismic reflection profiles taken in earlier oil exploration efforts have also hinted at layered, dome-shaped structures at depth, which some now interpret as possible sills or lacoliths, igneous intrusions that may still be thermally active. If such a body is slowly inflating, it could be exerting upward pressure on the overlying strata, triggering the deformation seen at the surface. Adding further intrigue is a subtle pattern of asymmetric deformation. While most of the uplift is centered below the southern basin, some displacement vectors curve northward, suggesting that the pressure source may be laterally migrating. This behavior is consistent with pressurized dike propagation, a phenomenon observed at other intraplate volcanic fields. Additionally, satellite-based thermal imaging has revealed several low temperature anomalies near shallow sediment caps on the lake's southeastern floor. Though not indicative of high heat flow, these anomalies might represent diffused degassing through microfractures or minor hydrothermal circulation, hinting at a warm, fluid active zone below. Together, these findings suggest a complex interplay between hydrologic change, fault structure, and deep earth dynamics. Whether this represents a transient episode or a longer-term reawakening of tectonic forces beneath Lake Powell remains to be seen, but geologists are now treating the region with renewed urgency. Why this matters and what's at stake. This isn't just about a few millimeters of uplift. What concerns scientists is the speed, pattern, and location of the movement and its proximity to critical infrastructure. Lake Powell is bordered by Glen Canyon Dam, a massive concrete arch gravity dam completed in the 1960s and now a cornerstone of the Southwest's water and energy system. The dam impounds the Colorado River and provides hydroelectric power to more than 5 million people. It also regulates river flow to downstream states, including Arizona, Nevada, and California. Any disruption to its operation would ripple far beyond the canyon walls. Though the dam is engineered to withstand immense hydrostatic pressure, it was not originally designed with active seismic deformation beneath its foundation in mind. New ground motion patterns suggest that the stress environment beneath the lake may be evolving in unexpected ways. The risk isn't necessarily catastrophic failure, but rather the potential for hidden vulnerabilities to emerge. The long-term implications are not yet fully understood. However, the mere presence of measurable deformation confirmed by multiple data streams has prompted a re-evaluation of Lake Powell's classification within the National Seismic Risk Registry. The dam's risk profile is being recalibrated to include real-time ground motion tracking, automatic shutoff protocols for power generation turbines, and emergency reservoir drawdown modeling. This moment serves as a reminder. Infrastructure built under mid-20th century assumptions may no longer align with 21st century geophysical realities. As our climate, hydrology, and tectonics evolve, so too must our readiness to adapt. A climate-stressed landscape under pressure. Lake Powell's geologic awakening comes at a time when climate-driven stress is already reshaping the region. The lake has dropped to historic lows in recent years, exposing sandstone cliffs, buried sediment, and even ancient Native American dwellings. These changes in the landscape are more than visual. They are physical responses to shifting mass balances and environmental instability. As the lake's water level recedes, it removes millions of tons of hydrostatic pressure from the underlying crust. This phenomenon, known as crustal unloading, can have significant geomechanical effects. In Lake Powell's case, the unloading not only alters the stress state in the upper crust, but can also accelerate pore fluid migration, destabilize shallow slopes, and reduce the normal stress on existing faults, making them more prone to slippage. Thermal expansion is also playing a role. Rising ambient air temperatures in the region 
have increased surface and subsurface heat gradients, particularly in shallow aquifers and sediment layers. These elevated temperatures may be causing differential expansion between rock types, which in turn introduces localized strain at lithologic boundaries. Over time, this thermal stress can contribute to joint widening, increased permeability, and even fracture propagation along existing weaknesses. The next steps, monitoring a shifting lake bed. The USGS, NASA, and regional universities have launched a joint effort to monitor Lake Powell's subsurface in real time, leveraging cutting edge instruments and integrated analysis platforms. Here's what they're deploying. Continuous GPS stations to track horizontal and vertical motion installed at strategic locations along the lake perimeter and on bedrock outcrops. These stations provide sub-centimeter accuracy and update every 15 minutes, allowing scientists to catch rapid deformation signatures as they emerge. Dense seismometer arrays to detect microquakes and tremor clusters. This includes broadband seismometers to capture low frequency signals associated with fluid movement and nodal arrays deployed in remote canyons to monitor areas previously outside the permanent seismic network. Borehole pressure sensors to measure changes in deep aquifers and poor fluid migration. These are positioned at different stratigraphic depths to distinguish between shallow groundwater effects and deeper hydrothermal anomalies. This data is being fed into a newly developed cloud-based analytics platform where it is continuously compared against a library of historical deformation profiles using deep learning neural networks. These AI models are trained on datasets from similar tectonohydrological systems, such as those beneath Mount St. Helens, Lake Kivu, and the Taupo Volcanic Zone to help predict potential outcomes based on evolving input patterns. A tectonic message in the desert. The Earth just sent a signal through the crust of Lake Powell. It was small, but it was fast, and it was real. Will this deformation grow into something bigger or fade quietly into the geologic record? If past patterns from similar geologic settings are any guide, it's possible that what we're witnessing is the early phase of a much larger subterranean adjustment. In many volcanic or tectonic regions, seemingly insignificant deformation episodes have preceded longer-term ground displacement or low-magnitude quake swarms. It's often the quiet movements that whisper before a fault truly speaks. Either way, it reminds us that even the calmest lakes can sit atop restless ground. The confluence of geological structure, fluctuating climate stressors, and hidden subsurface systems means Lake Powell deserves our attention, not just as a water reservoir, but as a window into the active earth below. Let us know what you think in the comments. Is this a warning sign of deeper unrest or just a natural response to climate extremes? Do you think the data points to an awakening system or a rare but isolated anomaly? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more updates from beneath the earth's surface. Because the desert doesn't just hold secrets, it moves, and sometimes it moves fast.